Now, Chapter 10 of the Majulila, The Lord's Return to Jagannath Puri. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is compared to a cloud that pours water on fields of grain, which are like devotees suffering due to a shortage of rain. Separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like a drought, but when the Lord returns, His presence is like a nectarian rain that falls on all the grains and saves them from perishing. All glories to Lord Chaitanya, all glories to Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Chandra, and all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu departed for South India, King Prataparudra called Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya to his palace. When Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya met with the king, the king offered him a seat with all respects and inquired about news of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The king said to the Bhattacharya, I have heard that one great personality has come from Bengal and is staying at your home. I have also heard that he is very, very merciful. I have also heard that this great personality has shown you great favor. At any rate, this is what I hear from many different people. Now, being merciful upon me, you should do me the favor of arranging an interview. The Bhattacharya replied, All that you have heard is true, but as far as an interview is concerned, it is very difficult to arrange. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the renounced order and is very much detached from worldly affairs. He stays in solitary places, and even in dreams he does not grant interviews to a king. Still, I would have tried to arrange your interview, but he has recently left to tour South India. The king asked, Why has he left Jagannath Puri? Such are the pastimes of a great personality. Great saints go to holy places of pilgrimage in order to purify them. For that reason, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is visiting many tirthas and delivering many, many conditioned souls. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, King Yudhisthira said to Vidura, Saints of your caliber are themselves places of pilgrimage. Because of their purity, they are constant companions of the Lord. Therefore, they can purify even the places of pilgrimage. A Vaishnav travels to places of pilgrimage to purify them and reclaim fallen conditioned souls. This is one of the duties of a Vaishnav. Actually, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not a living entity, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Consequently, He is a fully independent controller, yet in His position as a devotee, He carries out the activities of a devotee. Upon hearing this, the king replied, Why did you allow him to leave? Why didn't you fall at his lotus feet and keep him here? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself and is completely independent. Being Lord Krishna Himself, He is not dependent on anyone. Still, I endeavored very hard, hard to keep Him here. But because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and completely independent, <laughs> I was not successful. Bhattacharya, you are the most learned and experienced person I know. Therefore, when you address Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Lord Krishna, <laughs> I accept this as the truth. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returns again, I wish to see him just once in order to make my eyes perfect. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya replied, 
His Holiness Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will return very soon. I wish to have a nice place ready for him, a place solitary and peaceful. Lord Chaitanya's residence should be very secluded and also near the temple of Jagannath. Please consider this proposal and give me a nice place for him. Kashi Mishra's house is exactly what you require. It is near the temple and is very secluded and calm and quiet. After saying this, the king became very anxious for the Lord to return. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya then went to Kashi Mishra to convey the king's desire. When Kashi Mishra heard the proposal, he said, I am very fortunate that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord of all Prabhus, will stay at my home. Thus all the residents of Jagannath Puri, which is also known as Purushottam, were very anxious to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again. While all the residents of Jagannath Puri were thus anxious, the Lord returned from South India. Hearing of the Lord's return, everyone became very happy, and they all went to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and spoke to him as follows. Please arrange our meeting with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is only by your mercy that we can attain the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. The Bhattacharya replied to the people, Tomorrow the Lord will be at the house of Kashi Mishra. I shall arrange for you all to meet him. The next day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived and went with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya with great enthusiasm to see the temple of Lord Jagannath. All the servants of Lord Jagannath delivered remnants of the Lord's food to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In return, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced them all. After seeing Lord Jagannath, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the temple. Bhattacharya then took him to the house of Kashi Mishra. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived at his house, Kashi Mishra immediately fell down at his lotus feet and surrendered himself and all his possessions. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then showed Kashi Mishra his four-armed form. Then, accepting him for his service, the Lord embraced him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu next sat down at the place prepared for him, and all the devotees, headed by Lord Nityananda Prabhu, surrounded him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy to see his residential quarters, in which all his necessities were taken care of. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, this place is just befitting you. Please accept it. It is the hope of Kashi Mishra that you do. My body belongs to all of you. Therefore, I agree to whatever you say. After this, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, sitting at the right hand of the Lord, began to introduce all the inhabitants of Purushottam, Jagannath Puri. The Bhattacharya said, My dear Lord, all these people who are residents of Nila Charles, Jagannath Puri, have been very anxious to meet you. In your absence, all these people have been exactly like thirsty Chataka birds, crying in disappointment. So you kindly please accept them. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya first introduced Janardhan, saying, Here is Janardhan, servant of Lord Jagannath. He renders service to the Lord when it is time to renovate his transcendental body. This is Krishna Das. He carries a golden cane. And here is Shiki Mahiti, who is in charge of writing. And this is Pradumya Mishra, who is chief of all the Vaishnavas. He is a great servitor of Jagannath, and his name is Das. And, and this is a Morari Mahiti, the brother of Shiki Mahiti. He has nothing other than your lotus feet. And here are Chandaneshwar, and Singeshwar, Morari Brahman, and Vishnu Das. They are all constantly engaged in meditating on your lotus feet. This is Paramananda Paharaj, who is also known as Mahapatra. He is very, very intelligent. And all these pure devotees serve as ornaments to Jagannath Puri. 
They are always undeviatingly meditating upon your lotus feet. After this introduction, everyone fell to the ground like rods. Merciful upon them all, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced each and every one of them. At this time, Bhavananda Rai appeared with his four sons, and all of them fell down at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya continued, uh, This is Bhavananda Rai, the father of Sri Ramananda Rai, who is his first son. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Bhavananda Rai, and with great respect spoke of his son Ramananda Rai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu honored Bhavananda Rai by saying, the glories of a person who has a jewel of a son like Ramananda Roy cannot be described within this mortal world. You are Maharaj Pandu himself, and your wife is Kunti Devi herself. All your highly intellectual sons are representatives of the five Pandavas. After hearing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's praise, Bhavananda Rai submitted. I am in the fourth class of the social order, and I engage in mundane affairs. Although I am very fallen, you have still touched us. This is proof that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Appreciating Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's favor, Bhavananda Roy also said, Along with my home and riches, servants and five sons, I surrender myself at your lotus feet. This son, Vaninath, will remain at your lotus feet to always immediately attend to your orders and serve you. My dear Lord, please consider me your relative. Do not hesitate to order whatever you desire at any time you desire it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted Bhavananda Rai's offer, saying, I accept without hesitation, because you are not an outsider. Birth after birth you have been my servant, along with your family members. Sri Ramananda Rai is coming within five to seven days. As soon as he arrives, my desires will be fulfilled. I take great pleasure in his company. Saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Bhavananda Rai. The Lord then touched the heads of his sons with his lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then sent Bhavananda Roy back to his home, and he kept only Vaninath Patanayak in his personal service. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya then asked all the people to leave. Afterward, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called for Kala Krishnadas, who accompanied the Lord during his South Indian tour. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My dear Bhattacharya, just consider this man's character. He went with me to South India. He left my company to associate with the Bhattaharis, but I rescued him from their company and brought him here. Now that I have brought him here, I am asking him to leave. Now he can go wherever he likes, for I am no longer responsible for him. Hearing the Lord reject him, Kala Krishna Das began to cry. However, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not caring for him, immediately left to take his noon lunch. After this, the other devotees, headed by Nityananda Prabhu, Jagannanda, Mukunda, and Damodar, began to consider a certain plan. The Lord's four devotees considered, We want a person to go to Bengal just to inform Shachi Mata about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrival at Jagannath Puri. After hearing news of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrival, devotees like Advaita and Srivas will certainly come to see him. Let us therefore send Krishna Das to Bengal. Saying this, they kept Krishnadas engaged in the service of the Lord and gave him assurance. The next day, all the devotees asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Please give permission for a person to go to Bengal. Mother Sachi and all the devotees, headed by Advaita Prabhu, are all very unhappy due to not receiving news about your return from your South Indian tour. 
one person should go to Bengal and inform them about the auspicious news of your return to Jagannath Puri. Upon hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Do whatever you decide. In this way, Kala Krishnadas was sent to Bengal, and he was given sufficient quantities of Lord Jagannath's food remnants to distribute there. Thus Kala Krishnadas went to Bengal, and he first went to Navadvip to see Mother Shachi. Upon reaching Mother Shachi, Kala Krishnadas first offered his obeisances and delivered the food remnants or Maha Prasad. He then informed her of the good news that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had returned from his South Indian tour. The good news gave much pleasure to Mother Shachi as well as to all the devotees of Navadvip headed by Sri Bas Thakur. Hearing of Lord Chaitanya's return to Puri, everyone became glad. Krishnadas next went to the house of Advaita Charya. After paying him respectful obeisances, Krishnadas offered Maha Prasad to Advaita Charya. He then informed him of the news of Lord Chaitanya in complete detail. When Advaita Charya Goswami heard of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's return, he became very pleased. In his great ecstasy of love, he made a rumbling sound and danced and chanted for a long time. Also, hearing this auspicious news, Haridas Thakur became very pleased. So also did Vasudev Dutt, Morari Gupta, and Shivananda Sain. Acharya Ratna, Bakrishvar Pandit, Acharya Nidhi, and Gadadhar Pandit were all very pleased to hear the news. Sri Ram Pandit, Damodar Pandit, Sriman Pandit, Vijaya, and Sridhar were also very pleased to hear it. Raghava Pandit, the son of Advaita Acharya, and all the devotees became very satisfied. Everyone was very much pleased, and together they arrived at the house of Advaita Acharya. All the devotees offered respectful obeisances at the lotus feet of Advaita Acharya, and in return Advaita Acharya embraced them all. Advaita Acharya then held a festival that lasted two or three days. Thereafter, they all made a firm decision to go to Jagannath Puri. All the devotees met together at Navadvip and, with Mother Shachi's permission, departed for Niladri, Jagannath Puri. The inhabitants of Kulina Gram, Satyaraj, Ramananda, and all the other devotees there came and joined Advaita Charya. Mukunda, Narahari, Raghunandan, and all the others came from Kanda to Advaita Charya's home to accompany him to Jagannath Puri. At that time, Parmananda Puri also came from South India. Traveling along the banks of the Ganges, he ultimately reached the town of Nadia. At Navadvip, Parmananda Puri took his board and lodging at the house of Shachi Mata. She provided him with everything very respectfully. While residing at the house of Shachi Mata, Paramananda Puri heard the news of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's return to Jagannath Puri. He therefore decided to go there as soon as possible. There was a devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu named Dvija Kamalakanta, whom Paramananda Puri took with him to Jagannath Puri. Parmananda Puri very soon arrived at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's place. The Lord was very happy to see him. In a great ecstasy of love, the Lord worshipped the lotus feet of Parmananda Puri, and in turn, Parmananda Puri embraced the Lord in great ecstasy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Please stay with me and thus show me favor accepting the shelter of Jagannath Puri. Parmananda Puri replied, I also wish to stay with you. Therefore, I have come from Bengal, Goda, to Jagannath Puri. At Navadweep, Mother Shachi and all the other devotees were very glad to hear about your return from South India. They are all coming here to see you, but seeing that they were delayed, I came alone very quickly. There was a solitary room at Kashi Mishra's house, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave it to Parmananda Puri. He also gave him one servant. Yes. 
Farouk Damodar also arrived the next day. He was a very intimate friend of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he was an ocean of transcendental mellows. Once Farouk Damodar was residing at Navadvip under the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his name was Purushottam Acharya. After seeing that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the renounced order, Purushottam Acharya became like a madman and immediately went to Varnasi to take sannyas. At the conclusion of his sannyas, his spiritual master, Chaitanyananda Bharati, ordered him, Read Vedanta Sutra and teach it to all others. Svarup Damodar was a great renunciate, as well as a great learned scholar. With heart and soul he took shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. He was very enthusiastic to worship Sri Krishna without disturbance. Therefore, it was almost in madness that he accepted the sannyas order. Upon accepting sannyas, Purushottam Acharya followed the regulative principles by giving up his tuft of hair and sacred thread. But he did not accept the saffron-colored dress. Also, he did not accept a sannyasi title, but remained as a Naishtika Brahmachari or lifetime celibate. After taking permission from his sannyas guru, Svarup Damodar went to Nilachal and accepted the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then all day and all night, in ecstatic love of Krishna, he enjoyed transcendental mellows in the loving service of the Lord. Svarup Damodar was the limit of all learned scholarship, but he did not exchange words with anyone. He simply remained in a solitary place, and no one could understand where he was. Sri Svarup Damodar was the personification of ecstatic love, fully cognizant of the transcendental mellows in relationship with Krishna. He directly represented Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his second expansion. If someone wrote a book or composed verses and songs and wanted to recite them before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Svarup Damodar would first examine them and then correctly present them. Only then would Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agree to listen. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was never pleased to hear books or verses opposed to the conclusive statements of devotional service. The Lord did not like hearing Rasa Bas, the overlapping of transcendental mellows. It was the practice for Svarup Damada Goswami to examine all literatures to find out whether their conclusions were correct. Only then would he allow them to be heard by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Svarup Damodar used to read the poems of Vidyapati and Chandidas and Jayadev Goswami's Sri Gita Govinda. He used to make Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very happy by singing these songs. Svarup Damodar was as expert a musician as the Gandharvas, and in scriptural discussion he was just like Brihaspati, the priest of the heavenly gods. Therefore it is to be concluded that there was no great personality quite like Svarup Damodar. Sri Svarup Damodar was very dear to Advaitacharya and Nityananda Prabhu, and he was the life and soul of the devotees headed by Srivas Thakur. It was Farup Damodar who came to Jagannath Puri and fell flat before the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, offering him obeisances and reciting a verse. He said, O ocean of mercy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, let there be an awakening of your auspicious mercy, which easily drives away all kinds of material lamentation. By your mercy, everything is made pure and blissful. It awakens transcendental bliss and covers all gross material pleasures. By your auspicious mercy, quarrels and disagreements arising among different scriptures are vanquished. Your auspicious mercy causes the heart to jubilate by pouring forth transcendental mellows. Your mercy always stimulates devotional service, which is full of joy. 
You are always glorifying the conjugal love of God. May transcendental bliss be awakened within my heart by your causeless mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu raised Svarup Damodar to his feet and embraced him. They both became ecstatic in love and fell unconscious. After they had both regained their patience, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to speak. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I saw in a dream that you were coming, and so this is very auspicious. I have been like a blind man, but your coming here restores my vision. Svarup said, My dear Lord, please excuse my offense. I gave up your company to go elsewhere, and that was my great mistake. My dear Lord, I do not even possess a trace of love at your lotus feet. If I did, how could I go to another country? I am therefore a most sinful man. I gave up your company, but you did not give me up. By your merciful rope, you have bound me by the neck and brought me back again to your lotus feet. Svarup Damodar then worshipped the lotus feet of Nityananda Prabhu, and Nityananda in turn embraced him in the ecstasy of love. After worshipping Nityananda Prabhu, Svarup Damodar met Jagadananda, Mukunda, Shankara, and Sarvabhoma, as was befitting. Svarup Damodar also offered his worshipful prayers at the lotus feet of Parmananda Puri, who in return embraced him in ecstatic love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then gave Svarup Damodar residence in a solitary place and ordered one servant to serve him with a supply of water and other necessities. The next day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat with all the devotees headed by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and they discussed the pastimes of Krishna. At that time, Govinda appeared on the scene, offered his respectful obeisances, and spoke submissively. I am the servant of Ishvar Puri. My name is Govinda, and following the orders of my spiritual master, I have come here. Just before his departure from this mortal world, to attain the highest perfection, Ishvar Puri told me that I should go to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and render service unto him. Kashishvar will also come here after visiting all the holy places. However, following the orders of my spiritual master, I have hastily come to be present at your lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, My spiritual master, Ishvar Puri, always favors me with paternal affection. Therefore, out of his causeless mercy, he has sent you here. After hearing this, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why did Ishvar Puri keep a servant who comes from a Sudra family? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Both the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the spiritual master Ishvara Puri are completely independent. Therefore, the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Ishvara Puri is not subjected to any Vedic rules and regulations. The mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not restricted to the jurisdiction of caste and creed. Vidura was a sudra, yet Krishna accepted lunch at his home. Lord Krishna's mercy is dependent only on affection. Being obliged only by affection, Lord Krishna acts very independently. In conclusion, dealings in affection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead bring happiness many millions of times greater than dealings with Him in awe and veneration. Simply by hearing the holy name of the Lord, the devotee is merged in transcendental bliss. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Govinda, and Govinda in turn offered his respectful obeisances unto Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then continued speaking to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Consider this point. The servant of the spiritual master is always respectable for me. As such, 
It is not befitting that the Guru's servant should engage in my personal service. Yet my spiritual master has given this order. So what shall I do? Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya said, The order of the spiritual master is very strong and cannot be disobeyed. That is the injunction of the Shastras, the revealed scriptures. Being ordered by his father, Parasuram killed his mother, Renuka, just as if she were an enemy. Lakshman, the younger brother of Lord Ramachandra, immediately engaged himself in the service of his elder brother and accepted his orders. The order of the spiritual master must be obeyed without consideration. Lord Ramachandra said, The order of a great personality, like a father, must be executed without consideration, because there is good fortune in such an order for both of us. In particular, there is good fortune for me. After Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Govinda and engaged him in the service of his personal body. Everyone respected Govinda as the dearest servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Govinda served all the Vaishnavas and saw to their needs. Both Haridas Sr. and Haridas Jr., who were musicians, as well as Ramai and Nandai, used to stay with Govinda. They all remained with Govinda to serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, no one could estimate the good fortune of Govinda. The next day, Mukunda Dutt informed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Brahmananda Bharati has come to see you. Mukunda Dutt then asked the Lord, Shall I bring him here? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Brahmananda Bharati is like my spiritual master. It is better that I go to him. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees came before the presence of Brahmananda Bharati. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees approached him, they saw that he was covered with a deer skin. Seeing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very unhappy. Seeing Brahmananda Bharati thus attired, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pretended not to see him. Instead, he asked Mukunda Dutt, Where is Brahmananda Bharati, my spiritual master? Mukunda Dutt replied, Here is Brahmananda Bharati in your presence. You are incorrect. This is not Brahmananda Bharati. You must be talking of someone else, for this is surely not Brahmananda Bharati. You simply have no knowledge. Why should Brahmananda Bharati wear a deer skin? When Brahmananda Bharati heard this, he thought, My deer skin is not approved by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus admitting his mistake, Brahmananda Bharati thought, He spoke well. I put on this deer skin only for prestige. I cannot cross over the ocean of nations simply by wearing a deer skin. From today on, I shall not wear this deer skin. As soon as Brahmananda Bharati decided this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, understanding his mind, immediately sent for the robes of a sannyasi. As soon as Brahmananda Bharati gave up his deer skin and covered himself with sannyasi robes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and offered his respects at his lotus feet. Brahmananda Bharati said, You instruct the general populace by your behavior. I will not do anything against your wishes. Otherwise, you will not offer me respects, but will neglect me, and I am very much afraid of this. At the present moment, I see two Brahmins. One Brahmin is Lord Jagannath, who does not move, and the other Brahmin, who is moving, is you. Lord Jagannath is Archa Vigraha, the worshipable deity, and it is he who is the non-moving Brahmin. However, you are Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and you are moving here and there. Both of you are the same Brahmin, master of material nature, but you are playing two parts, one moving and one not moving. In this way, Two Brahmins are now residing at Jagannath Puri, Purushottam. Of the two Brahmins, you are fair-complexioned, and the other, Lord Jagannath, is blackish. However, both of you are delivering the whole world. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Actually, to tell you the truth, due to your presence, there are now two Brahmins at Jagannath Puri. Both Brahmananda and Godahari are moving, whereas the blackish Lord Jagannath is sitting tight and immobile. Brahmananda Bharati said, My dear Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, please become the mediator in this logical argument between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and me. The living entity is localized, whereas the Supreme Brahman is all-pervading. That is the verdict of the revealed scriptures. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu purified me by taking away my deer skin. This is proof that he is all-pervasive and all-powerful and that I am subordinate to him. As it is said in the Mahabharata, his bodily hue is golden and his whole body is like molten gold. Every part of his body is very beautifully constructed and smeared with sandalwood pulp. Accepting the renounced order, the Lord is always equipoised. He is firmly fixed in his mission of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, and he is firmly situated in his dualistic conclusion and in his peace. All the symptoms mentioned in the verse from Vishnu Sahasranam Stotra are visible in the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His arms are decorated with ornamental bangles made of sandalwood pulp and with the thread received from the Sri Jagannath deity. After hearing this, Savrabhuma Bhattacharya rendered his judgment, saying, Ramananda Bharati, I see you are victorious. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately said, I accept whatever Brahmananda Bharati has said. It is quite all right with me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus posed himself as a disciple and accepted Brahmananda Bharati as his spiritual master. He then said, The disciple is certainly defeated in an argument with the spiritual master. Brahmananda Bharati immediately countered these words saying, This is not the cause of your defeat. There is another cause. This is your natural characteristic. You accept defeat at the hands of your devotee. This is also another glory of yours, which I ask you to hear attentively. I have been meditating on the impersonal Brahman since my birth, but since I have seen you, I have fully experienced Krishna. Since I have seen you, I have been feeling the Lord's presence in my mind, and have been seeing him before my eyes. I now want to chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. Over and above this, within my heart, I consider you to be Krishna, and I am therefore very eager to serve you. Bilva Mangal Thakur abandoned his impersonal realization for the realization of the personality of Godhead. I now see that my condition is similar to his, for it has already changed. Although I was worshipped by those on the path of monism and initiated into self-realization through the yoga system, I am nonetheless forcibly turned into a maidservant by some cunning boy who is always joking with the gopis. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, You have a deep ecstatic love for Krishna. Therefore, wherever your eyes turn, you simply heighten your Krishna consciousness. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya said, Both your statements are correct. Krishna gives direct audience to his own mercy. Without having ecstatic love for Krishna, one cannot see him directly. Therefore, to the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Brahmananda Bharati has acquired direct vision of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, what are you saying? Lord Vishnu, save me! Such glorification is simply another form of blasphemy. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Brahmananda Bharati with him to his residence. From that time on, Brahmananda Bharati remained with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later, Ramabhadra Acharya and Bhagavan Acharya also joined them and, giving up all other responsibilities, remained under Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's shelter. The next day, Kashishbar Gosani also came and remained with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who received him with great respect. 
Kashishbar used to usher Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu into the Jagannath temple. He would precede the Lord into the crowd and keep the people from touching him. As all the rivers flow into the sea, all the devotees throughout the country finally came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's shelter. Since all the devotees came to him for shelter, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed them all mercy and kept them under his protection. Thus I have described the meeting of all the Vaishnavas with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Whoever hears this description ultimately attains his shelter. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends chapter 10 of the Madhya Leela, The Lord's Return.